Hello there, I'm Shailen Cotton, here at The Gamer to give you a complete walkthrough of the Coiled Captors DLC in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So, if you haven't already purchased the Season Pass or the Chaotic Great Edition of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, you'll need to buy the Season Pass or this chapter of the DLC separately to access the Coiled Captors DLC. You must be at least level 13 to enter the Coiled Captors dungeon, but the enemy level will continue to scale based on your current level. You can find the entrance to this DLC in a new area called Dream Vale Overlook, just down the road from the Queen's Gate entrance in the overworld, and just to the right of the Shrine of Moolah. Rest in peace, Backstab. Inside, we have Vesper and the Wheel of Fate. It functions kind of like the Barf Bunnies of the Chaos Dungeon, except spinning this wheel gives you the chance to loot a single random rare gear piece, depending on what gear item the wheel lands on. Except the Wheel of Fate has its own currency, called Souls, which can only be gained from killing and looting inside Dream Vale Outlook. There are five areas you gotta get through before you can get the chums. These five areas are the same every time, no matter what difficulty you're on. In Area 1, after clearing the enemies outside, you'll find this puzzle door blocking the entrance to the temple. To open it, just shoot the statue heads glowing red above it so that only the shark heads are facing outwards. On the other side is a badass enemy that is weak to poison damage. Jump down into this pit and turn the valve to raise the water level so you can use this box to mantle into the next area. From here, kill everyone and everything to open the portal. Area 2 has three puzzle columns with a mechanic just like the first area's temple door. Shooting the statue heads causes them to rotate, so you need to shoot the statues until all the shark heads are aligned and glow gold. Except these need to be done in order. The first puzzle column is found straight ahead from the area of spawn. The second one can be located after moving left from puzzle column 1 through this underground market area and into a snowy courtyard. The last puzzle column is located here inside this elevated stone corridor. Every time a puzzle column is aligned, the frozen numbs surrounding it will unfreeze and become aggressive side Pisces. But once all the columns are aligned, the next portal opens. Area 3 is easy as pie. Just turn all four of the valves to fill the water channels in this area. The only problem is that the enemies won't stop spawning until your objective is complete. Once all the valves are turned, the hammerhead appears. He's only a flesh enemy though, and weak to fire damage, so once he's a pile of sashimi, the next portal opens. A pool of lava blocks your path out of area 4, but conveniently enough, a flood is also coming. Until then, you have to survive the constant onslaught of regular and badass enemies. Once the water level has risen, you can find two valves right before the exit. Turning them cools the lava to form a bridge to the next portal. Poison damage is good against these badass enemies, but not so much against the other coiled. A call back to the second area, the final level of Coiled Captors has three more puzzle columns for you to solve. While these don't need to be done in any particular order, the area is swarming with Coiled. There's also a pool of lava steadily on the rise, but as long as you stick to the higher platforms, you should be safe. Be especially wary of the badass enemies that spawn every time a puzzle column is solved. Once all the columns are aligned, it opens the portal to chums. Okay, so running it back a second, what makes Coiled Captors special in the first place is its souls currency. While these do drop from most enemies, each area also has two souls chests that reward extra souls. The catch is these spawn completely randomly, so every time you do a run, they might be in a whole new spot. Let me walk you through the route I take every chums run to check all the known souls chest spots. In area one, I start by immediately heading out to the right to check for the chest along this temple wall. Then, after dealing with the guards, I mantle onto this cliff to check if there's another chest overlooking the temple door. Next, once the badass coiled is dead, I look against the left wall here just before the pit. And in the courtyard, I check for the souls chest that's in this corner by the big coiled statues. No matter where you found your first souls chest in this area, the second one will always be here. Pull down the skull and a pedestal lifts from the fountain to reveal the second chest. Alrighty, Rue, in area 2, the first place I check for a chest is this merchant stall right before the first puzzle column. Then, after everything is dead, we continue up onto this platform and see if there's a chest right here, overlooking the same puzzle column. Once it's unlocked, I travel through this little underground market area and sometimes you can find a chest along the left wall here. If not, we make our way along to the second puzzle column. I'll mantle up onto this platform here to check for any chests. No? Okay, 
then I continue on into this little stone temple area to look for a chest tucked into the corner here. So in area 3, others have had some luck finding a soul's chest to the left of spawn right here in this little alcove, but I have yet to see one myself. Continuing along the left side of the map, I like to check this cliff here before the circle temple. If nothing's there, I continue on into the temple, and sometimes the chest is there right beside the health barrel instead. Next, I'll move out and check this area right with the floodgate that opens later when the portal appears. And if there's no luck yet, lastly I go up these stairs to the right and see if the last chest is here between trees. In area 4, the first place to check is to the left again, right along this stone railing. Sticking along this left wall, I continue to the end where the lava stream is. Sometimes there's a chest between these pink corals. When they go along, I'll head back a bit and see if there's a soul's chest behind these pillar on the platform. The next place to look is in this little stone temple on the right side of the map. If you head through this back door and around, sometimes a chest is here in this little passageway. Lastly, if I'm still missing one, I wrap around and head up these stairs to check if there's a chest on the second level next to this brazier. Okay, and for area 5, I'll start by taking the jump pad right across. To the right here, along this wall, there is sometimes a chest. There are also some people who have had luck checking directly across from the jump pad that heads back. I continue along this platform, but head left before the puzzle column. There is sometimes a chest here, beneath this big orange coral. Then I'll normally head right up these stairs and do this puzzle column. Moving towards the next puzzle column, you can often find another chest right across from it in this archway where the last portal actually appears. And lastly, I make my way to the remaining puzzle column, and in this spot, another soul's chest has a chance to appear. Like I said before, Chums has four different forms, and you have to beat all these areas first before you get to the boss fight. Each time you face him, he gets a little stronger. Our first Chums only has a flesh health bar. He'll spawn a bunch of side Pisces enemies and has about five typical attacks. A charge attack, a twirl attack, wave attack, sucking attack, and shock wave. Fire elemental damage is king here, but in general, as long as you try to stay at a distance and behind him, this form is a cakewalk. Next Chums brings some new friends called Stormlings. These are little tornado guys that roam around the area, and if you hit one, it'll pick you up and take you for a ride. The Stormlings have yellow health bars though, so they're weak to poison damage. Otherwise, all of Chum's moves are the same. Our third Chum spices things up a bit by adding a yellow health bar of his own. With no new moves added to this form, the only thing that really changes is that now you want to use poison damage to deal with both the Stormlings and Chum's first health bar. The final Chums, saving the worst for last. Now, when you enter the arena, there's a giant purple tornado that, unlike the Stormlings, can't be shot down. Chums also has some new moves to reckon with, including a bigger melee and a water spout attack. Plus, now when you cut down Chums' armor, he goes into a second phase where he launches up into the purple tornado and floats around the arena Sharknado style. The biggest challenge here, though, is to avoid getting too much knockback from the side Pisces and Stormlings. Don't get greedy, and be sure to open plenty of loot chests around the arena so you can pick up HP anytime you take a wallop. With all these tips in mind, you'll finally be able to best Chums and the Coiled Captors dungeon. For more tips and guides on Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, be sure to check out thegamer.com.